such by many people and many vloggers. However, I wanted to see for myself because I felt like it was a really affordable cruise option. I know some people are watching this video calling Carnival Cruise Lines the Walmart of the Seas, and then other people are calling Margaritaville the Dollar Tree of the Seven Seas. But let's be real, as long as you know what you're getting into, Dollar Tree has some really good value for some of the things it has in store, and I want to see what it's like on Margaritaville. Margaritaville at sea currently has one ship in its fleet, and that is the Paradise, which was built in 1991 and last refurbished in 2019. The cruise line is currently offering two night sailings out of West Palm Beach, and the cruise line will be adding a second ship in the summer of 2024, and the ship will be called the Islander. For this review, we'll just be talking about the Paradise because that is the ship that I sailed on. We're gonna start with day one, and to be honest with you, day one boarding is a complete nightmare. The port of West Palm Beach is mostly a commercial port, and I'm not talking commercial like cruising, I'm talking a lot like shipping containers. The entire ship is surrounded by shipping containers, and because of that, they only offer valet parking. So just know that there's anywhere from 500 to 1,000 cars that need to be valet parked. That means every car needs to be picked up by an attendant, driven to the parking garage, and then they have to run back and get the next car. There's about 10 attendants working, but if you think about it, with hundreds upon almost thousands of cars, the line is ridiculously long. It took us over an hour and a half to get our car parked. And there's no mention of valet parking on their website, so be prepared to have a little bit of a wait. And if you're coming towards the tail end of boarding time, I could see this causing a mass panic. So try to get to the port a little bit early if this is your first time sailing Margaritaville. And if you're wondering if you can self-park, you cannot. We asked that question to try to help alleviate some of the work from some of the attendants. And one of the guys just screamed at us to get in the car and no one will be parking themselves. So we didn't really have too much customer service expertise and was extremely rude to us. Once you get out of your car, you can take your bags into the terminal, which is another interesting point. You have to put your own bag through the security scanner and there's only one x-ray machine for every single one of the passenger's luggage. So if somebody has something that they're not supposed to have, like alcohol or any other illegal substances that is banned on a cruise, it then becomes this whole thing where you're holding up the entire security line while the one security guard opens up the bag goes through it, and after a little while, the line gets to be extremely long. This happened to us. We had a couple of shooters that we packed in our bag. We were stopped. He made us unzip our suitcase, and then he went through it, which took about five minutes. And yeah, it's just a little bit of an unnecessary task. After the security process, you'll go wait in a pretty long line to check in, and that's because Margaritaville has no pre-boarding check-in there's no way to set up your credit card to your sale and sign account. So you have to do all of that in front of a person who gives your personal credit card, reviews all your past important information, but that's not in their system. So that again could definitely be streamlined. Margaritaville could just have you make an account online, add a credit card, and that would cut down on the lines dramatically. I know MSC has a kiosk model. So if you had to do it in person, you could just do some kiosks at the port and make everyone do it once they get on board, I feel like that would be a lot easier than just having hundreds, if not thousands of people wait in line and have to single hand at least swipe a credit card every time after their passports have been checked. If you're still watching this good, we're getting to the actual vacation part. Boarding the ship is a breeze. It's a little bit of a rinky dink gangway, but it, that's, it gets the job done. You're able to walk onto the ship, no problems. The ship does depart a little bit later than a typical cruise ship. So with that being said, you can go to, you can get on the ship, explore the ship a little bit. And honestly, it does resemble a larger ferry, not really a modern cruise ship. But with that being said, there are some really cool spots on board. The five o'clock somewhere bar is located in the aft of the ship and has a really cool layout. It's the quintessential Margaritaville decor with a giant blender as a focal point and string lights on the ceiling, some lime lights on the ceiling. It's a very vacation vibe. It's what you think of when you think of Margaritaville, and it was my favorite bar on board. Also in this area is the Burger Bar, which has really thick burger patties, honestly, as well as vegetarian beef patties, and it also has a toppings bar, so you can get your lettuce, pickles, tomatoes, onions, and sauces all right there. I think my favorite burger out of any cruise line is Guy's Burgers from Carnival Cruise Lines, but this is a decent option, all things considered. 
and is a really good option for a grab and go meal. I will have to say there is some inconsistency issues that Margaritaville has to work out. Some time of day, the buns were super soft and pillowy. Other times of day, they were super hard. So based on the time of day that you go, you could get a stale bun or you can get a really good dining experience. But again, this is a free option, quick and easy. So after you grab a bite, you would think you want to maximize your time on the cruise because it is only a two day cruise. However, Margaritaville has other things in plan for you. Margaritaville is one of the few companies that still do an in-person mustard drill. And considering the vacation is pretty short, they're going to take 30 minutes to an hour of your time to get you in a really crowded room to explain a safety briefing that could have just been done on the TV like every other cruise line does. But that is just something that is a little nitpicky, but I wanted to make the most out of my 48 hours on board and having one of those hours taken away just for a safety briefing seems like something they can fix. Now that you made it through security, your check-in process, and the muster station, you are officially, officially on vacation. And I have to say, they start off with a deck party that is pretty lively. They do your typical line dances. The DJ switches it up and has a really wide variety of music. They do some entertainment. So they had some juggling on board. They had some people do unicycling riding. So they definitely had a little bit of a show aspect to the deck party which was pretty cool. We did have a few drinks at the main pool bar and we asked the bartender what he recommended. He recommended a margarita that was on the menu and it was a watermelon margarita. It was super sugary and it really didn't taste like there was any alcohol in it. After that, I was kind of turned off from actually getting cocktails. I mostly stuck to seltzers and just basically hard liquor mixed drinks like vodka soda, tequila soda. But I have to say, Margaritaville does have a really nice assortment of seltzers and beer. And I would go as far to say as they have the best selection of seltzers and beer out of any other cruise line because they have Truly, White Claw, and High Noon. Typically, a cruise line only gets a contract with one of those distributors. So they had a contract with all three, which was really nice for a little bit of diversity. Even though you're only on the cruise for two days, if you get sick of one brand or another, you can have the other options, which is really, really nice. So when you think of a cruise, the most important thing I personally think of is food. And I have to say, when we walked into the main dining room after the deck party, you knew this is where the majority of the money went when they did their renovation. I have to say that I am very aware of the reviews online and I do know the food isn't exactly supposed to be the best on Margaritaville. However, I have to say everything that I had was really good in the main dining room especially. After looking over the menu at the main dining room, we asked our waiter if there was a limit of how many appetizers and entrees we could have because we saw a bunch of options that really appealed to us. And they basically said, you can have as many appetizers as you want. You can only have one entree, but if you want any additional entrees, it's $7 a piece after that, which is pretty reasonable. So for the quality of the food, I can't complain. Throughout our time on board, I have to say the appetizers that really stuck out were the jambalaya, the gumbo, these Cuban croquettes and the Caesar salad for appetizers. All the apps were extremely well done other than the caprese salad missing tomatoes, but that's just a minor detail. The mozzarella quality honestly made up for the lack of tomatoes. The entree selection was actually pretty good. I got a jerk chicken for both nights on the menu. It wasn't really a jerk chicken. It was more of like a spicy barbecue chicken, but the flavor was really good. The chicken was actually juicy. And for being mass produced in a main dining room, I have to say it was really well done. And considering this is supposed to be America's worst cruise line, I have to say the food is better than MSC by a landslide. So kudos to Margaritaville. And then for dessert, we got a brownie topped with caramel drizzle, chocolate drizzle, and of course, vanilla ice cream. The brownie was warm and it had a really great flavor. It wasn't anything outstanding, but it was pretty good. And to be honest, I could see that meal costing me 50 to $60 a person on land and we were able to book Margaritaville at sea pretty last minute for $45 a person for the entire cruise before taxes and fees. So yeah, that meal paid for the entire cruise in itself. Sticking along the theme of meals, Margaritaville offers a brunch for an additional fee. However, I do have to say the brunch is worth looking into because it's bottomless mimosas, bellinis, and bloody marys. And because Margaritaville doesn't have an all you can drink package, this is extremely appealing. It was $35 a person. You got unlimited mimosas. So that alone was worth 35 bucks in my opinion. We went there, had a decent amount of drinks. 
had some okay quality food. It wasn't exactly seasoned the best, but the drinks made it taste a lot better by the end of the meal. Going along with food, I will have to say the buffet is extremely small, but they do offer some stations that make up for its size. They have a custom pasta bar station, which did have some decent quality pasta. And then they also had a panini station that you could pick all the meats and cheeses that you wanted put on a sandwich and they would press it for you. And that really hit the spot after we came on board the second day from just walking around in the Bahamas. So honestly, that's fine. And then there's a rotating selection of food, but it's really only about eight to 10 dishes. And they're kind of really random dishes. Like you have fried chicken next to pork, next to meatloaf, next to just white plain rice. It was like kind of going to a small golden corral and that was probably the exact same quality of food. So you can imagine that we really didn't eat at the buffet. We kind of just stuck to either the burger restaurant or the main dining room for pretty much the entire cruise. Moving on from food, we're gonna talk about entertainment because when you're on a cruise, you expect to be entertained. And honestly, the entertainment's just eh. We went to a show both nights and I have to say the song and dance numbers were fine, but they did have an aerialist in one of the shows and then a juggler and acrobatist on another night. And those were entertaining, but they really weren't like incredible. It was more like an elevated talent show than it was a cruise show. After the show, it was the typical nightlife on a cruise. The casino was packed. The casino is relatively small, all things considered, but because there aren't that many people on board because it is a smaller ship, it really pans itself out. There's not too many people trying to fight for seats at tables or trying to sit down at a slot. There is room for pretty much everyone, which was really nice. If the nightclubs you're seeing, I have to say the music is really, really good on Margaritaville. They do a great job of switching up genres. They do their best to get everyone on the dance floor in the nightclub. And honestly, because they have the drink bands that you can buy 10 drinks for $100, a lot of people are just willing to give away their drinks to people they meet just to have a good conversation. And honestly, the light club gets lit and goes into the wee hours of the night. I have to say, if you're going on any cruise below a four to five night cruise, you can expect it to be a booze cruise. And Margaritaville is no exception to that. I mean, that is pretty much the whole theme of Margaritaville is getting wasted in Margaritaville and everyone is there to turn up and have a good time. Everyone's super personable. So the clientele, if you do like a party crowd, this would definitely be great for you. One of the standout activities for entertainment is the scavenger hunt that they do. They do an adult scavenger hunt. I do not have any footage of this for reasons to respect people's privacy, but I can tell you that it ended up as men dressing as women and doing dances and getting lap dances. So it's entertaining. It's This is a cruise line where you go to let loose. If you're a little bit more of a person who's introverted, I definitely wouldn't say this is a cruise line for you by any means. Up next, I wanna talk about cleanliness, especially for a ship that was built in 1991. It was kind of apparent that the ship was old. However, with an older ship comes with old engineering. And I have to say the rooms are gigantic compared to the size of the actual ship. They don't make rooms that size anymore. We had an ocean view and we were literally doing jumping jacks in the bathroom. The room was gigantic and the rooms are super clean. We did a black light test on all the sheets and glasses and they came back clean. However, the one thing I do wanna note is that the shower had a hole that's not covered in as a drain. And as soon as we started sailing, it started to stink immediately. And that smell did not go away as long as the ship was in motion. It smelled terrible pretty much all day and night, other than the times we were docked in port or docked at home. So if you don't do great with bad smells, I can imagine that being an extremely big issue. Also because this ship was built in 1991, I felt like outlets weren't really a thought. And I have to say, it's really hard to come by an outlet in the room. And the ones that we did come by were really loose and shaky. So we had to prop up things under the outlet to make sure that our chargers didn't fall out in the middle of the night. And that was pretty much inexcusable. I was kind of worried if I would have to wake up to a phone with zero battery or a camera to make videos with that wasn't charged overnight. So yeah, there was, that is probably the biggest thing that I feel like they should fix just by fixing some outlets. Another thing going along with the rooms was our room attendant wasn't exactly really friendly. And to be honest, I can't fault him because these are only two day cruises and I couldn't imagine 
every two days having to remember all of the people's names that you're cleaning up after just to have them get off the ship and do it again in another two days. So for that, I can't blame them, but they weren't really personable at all. They didn't even look at us really when we were walking by them in the hallways. So, I mean, it's a double-edged sword. Like I do want to be treated that well as a customer, but as a human being, I could totally understand like that's terrible considering other cruise lines have seven day sailings every week and you have to do three sailings in a week. I do want to make it very clear. You could tell the ship doesn't really look like it's cared for. There are holes in the seats. There were just activities around like the ping pong table that was just distraught. The ceiling was just a plastic cover. It wasn't actually any wood or metal. And then just to top it off, the funnel stack was just painted over Costa with some palm trees. Overall, when I hear critics say Margaritaville is the worst cruise line at sea, I can see where they're coming from. However, I feel like they're not taking into account how much this cruise is. I think it's a great option for a cheap weekend getaway. Like I said, we paid $45 with taxes and fees. It came out to about $200 a person. And honestly, for all the food and entertainment that's included in that, you really can't beat it. Like I can go to a restaurant and spend about 80 to $100 a person, and then that's just for one meal. So for this, you get a full weekend of things. You get a DJ, you get your shows, you have access to the pools and the hot tubs. I really don't think this is a bad thing. However, I can see this being booked out weeks, months, or years in advance and looking forward to it, why you would be extremely let down because it is just a two-day cruise at the end of the day with a lot of things on an older ship and the ship definitely does show its age in a lot of parts of the ship. This is the perfect quick last minute getaway for a weekend, but I definitely would not think of it anything more than that. So because we do a lot of reviews on this channel, I wanna start doing something new where we rate this ship from a scale of one to 10, 10 being Michelin star chefs with butlers who are giving us back massages and rubbing us to sleep. One being a ferry stranded out in the middle of the ocean I'm gonna give Margaritaville a 5.5, all things considered for the value. If you're starting to look in the range of three to $400 a person, that 5.5 can definitely go to like a 3.5 or four very quickly. But if you can get on the ship for a good price, understanding it is a, a quick weekend getaway and not treating it as a full-blown cruise, I think Margaritaville has something there. It's a very niche market. But I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. We do appreciate it. And we're hoping to get to 10,000 subscribers by the end of 2024. So if you guys can make that happen, we really appreciate it. Thank you. Take it easy. Peace.